Tarabala is an astrological technique from a whole other world of astrology. A world without signs or houses. A world of lights in the sky, the planets and the stars. The Tarabala technique describes how planets interact with each other. And the basis for the different kinds of relationships that the planets can have is the number of principal stars that separate them. And that's why the technique is called Tarabala. Tara means star. The Vedic sky associates 27 principal stars to the ecliptic, and these are the anchor stars for the very famous 27 nakshatras. Dividing 27 by 3 gives us the divisor's own square, 9. So Tarabala describes nine different kinds of relationships between planets, each with its own triplicating triangle. Those nine Tarabalas are of two categories, strengthening or weakening. And that's why the technique is called Tarabala. For the nine strengthen, for the nine weaken, and one of them kind of does both. Now I'll describe what those nine relationships are. And I'll use my own chart to illustrate how you get amazing interpretations out of these relationships. The first Tarabala is called Janma. It means birth, and that implies that these planets are born together like siblings. It forms when two planets are in the same nakshatra, or in a trine to that. Just like siblings, these two planets will get on each other's nerves because of their constant proximity, but they actually support each other by sharing their assets. So I have a new report called Star Strength which will give you all the Tarabalas in your chart and guide you in the interpretation of all of them. This star strength report shows that my Ketu and Mercury have Janma Tarabala. So, like siblings, they should be simultaneously frustrating each other, but also supporting each other and sharing each other's qualities, blending each other's qualities. This alone describes so many important things about me. So just to mention one example, K2 symbolizes introversion, and Mercury symbolizes socializing and conversation. So we can just take this really literal and say that my K2 and Mercury get on each other's nerves. And that would be exactly accurate and correct. I'm usually buried deep in thought throughout the day because of my career, etc. And I always get irritated by social interactions that seem to always be trying to force me out of that deep thought that took a long time to get into. So K2 is constantly getting in the way of Mercury, and Mercury is constantly annoying K2. But that's only the irritating side of a sibling relationship. Siblings also share their resources and support each other. So that should mean that my Mercury supports my K2, and my K2 supports my Mercury, as well as annoying each other. So that's also extremely accurate. My conversations, when I do have them, are K2-ish, which means they're pretty deep and quick. They get deep very quick. So this only scratches the surface of just what only a single Tarabala can reveal about you. That's why I was really excited to put together this new report, Star Strength, and I'm really excited to make this series of videos to sh share the information which is so little known about how to use Tarabala in a chart. So let's move on now to discuss the other eight Tarabalas and maybe go a little bit quicker with those so that you have enough energy and focus to actually get familiarized with all eight. The second Tarabala is called Sampat and that means coming together. So it's a strengthening Tarabala and it forms in a planet that's in the next nakshatra from another one, or in a trying to that. The planet who has this Tarabala comes forward, comes together, so it acts like a friend. And it comes forward to offer partnership and cooperation. So for example, the Star Strength Report shows that my Rahu gives Sampat Bala to my Jupiter. So this means that Rahu should be coming forward to Jupiter and offering support, etc trying to make friendship with Jupiter, or establishing connections with Jupiter. So this means that the things symbolized by Rahu should help me feel connected to and friendly with the things symbolized by Jupiter. 
Jupiter symbolizes religion, and Rahu symbolizes rebellion. So Rahu is very unconventional, non-mainstream, countercultural. So nothing, again, could be more accurate in my case. I'm a huge supporter of unconventional religions and philosophies, but I'm also very uninterested in mainstream versions of the same. So my access to Jupiter is through Rahu. The third Tarabala is called Vipat, which means falling apart. And this one is a weakening Tarabala. It arises in a planet that's one nakshatra ahead of another one. It has one nakshatra in between. A planet with this Tarabala acts like an ex who divorces and seeks distance and freedom. The Star Strength Report shows that my son gives Vipatavala to my Rahu. So this means that the things symbolized by the sun should want to divorce the things symbolized by Rahu. You can plug in any valid thing that the sun symbolizes and any valid thing that Rahu symbolizes and get more great interpretations out of this. But for now, let me just show you the one example. The sun represents leadership and Rahu represents extroversion. So that means that leadership should want to divorce extroversion. And that's me. I very strongly dislike dominant, loud, extroversive, assertive leadership. And I really never do well working with or under that kind of a leader. The fourth Tarabala is called Krema, which means sheltering. This is a strengthening Tarabala, and it generates in a planet that's two nakshatras ahead of another, or in a trying to that position. A planet that has this Tarabala acts like a parent parents give shelter, they tolerate flaws, they provide acceptance and safety and an environment in which the child can flourish and grow. The Star Strength Report shows that my Rahu gives Kshimabala to my Saturn. So to start with, it means that whatever Saturn symbolizes should feel to me to be protected by what Rahu symbolizes. And because of being protected, it should feel like it's safe and can flourish and can grow when it's associated with things that Rahu symbolizes. Well, Rahu symbolizes rebellion, and Saturn represents scrutiny, negativity, distrust. So what it means is that my rebelliousness and unruliness, my Rahuness, will become the parent helping my criticism, scrutiny, and negativity to flourish and grow and prosper. So, And indeed, I often feel like it's good and right to criticize others, even especially people that are in high positions or respected positions, because my Rahu rebelliousness, as also illustrated by Rahu's Tarabala with the sun, doesn't value hierarchy as anything worthwhile in and of itself. The fifth Tarabala is called Pratyak, and that means to disregard or disobey. This is a weakening Tarabala, and it's found in a planet that's three nakshatras ahead of another, and that is the maximum distance that you can get. Because if you go any further than that, you start to get closer to the first trine from the original position. If that isn't clear just by hearing it in words, take a look carefully at the diagram that's on the screen. The planet who has this fifth Tarabala Pratyak acts like a foe. Foes oppose, contradict, and willfully ignore the other. The Star Strength Report shows that my Rahu gives Pratyakabala to my Venus. So that means that the things that Rahu symbolizes should act like enemies towards the things that Venus symbolizes. So one thing that this means is when I get like Rahu, then my Venus doesn't prosper very well. When I get really loud and rebellious, then it's not that pretty. And to flesh that out really to show it, it means Rahu represents rebellion and Venus represents unity. And that means when I get like Rahu and get all nonconformant and rebellious and loud, 
there go all my relationships. Now you could say, well, that happens to anybody. No, it doesn't happen to anybody. Of course, it's potentially a way that you can ruin your relationships, but not everybody is a person that falls into that trap often. Or who gets loud in such a way that other people get irritated and they just want to take distance. The sixth tarabala is called sadhana, and that means disciplining. This is a strengthening tarabala, and it forms in a planet that it's four nakshatras ahead of another. So it's beginning to come closer to the first trine, and it's three nakshatras away from it. A planet that has this tarabala acts like a teacher. Teachers discipline students, and by disciplining them, they gradually strengthen the student by removing their flaws. The Star Strength Report shows that my Mercury gives sadhana bala to my Jupiter. So that means that for me, things symbolized Mercury will be acting like teachers for things symbolized by Jupiter. So obviously that's good for being able to learn because it's the planet of intellect acting as a teacher for the planet of learning. But here's another important interpretation. Mercury represents intellect, Jupiter represents religion. So my intellect is working as a teacher for religion. That means that I'm not the kind of person that likes dogma at all. So intellect is keeping faith disciplined and not allowing it to become blind. The seventh Tarabala is called Naidhana, and that means to diminish or drain. This is a weakening Tarabala, and it forms in a planet that's five nakshatras ahead of another, which means that it's two nakshatras away from the first shrine. planet with this Tarabala is like an energy vampire. They drain you, they bore you, they sap your enthusiasm and vitality, they take your resources like a leech, and they don't reciprocate anything. The Star Strength Report shows that my Ascendant gives Naidhanabala to my Rahu. So that means that for me, things symbolized by Rahu should find the things symbolized by the Ascendant to be really boring. Very exhausting and draining and burdensome. Again, you can plug different, any valid symbolism for either the Ascendant or Rahu and get an amazing fact about yourself. But let's use these two. Well, the Ascendant represents the real world, the practical world, the visible world, and Rahu represents greed. So, sure enough, I have very little hunger or greed for practical things in the real world. In other words, practical things in the real world bore my greed. And they feel just burdensome or they feel like they're just going to steal my energy. The eighth Tarabala is called Mitra, and that means friendship. It forms in a planet that is six nakshatras ahead of the other, which means that it's just one nakshatra away. From the first trine. A planet with this Tarabala is just like a friend. They're very loyal and faithful. They will give you everything they have just to hold on to your affection or to hold on to your respect. So the Star Strength Report shows that my Mercury gives Mitrabala to my Saturn. So that means for me, things symbolized by Mercury should be dedicating themselves to, very loyal to, things symbolized by Saturn. In other words, my Mercury is trying to get Saturn's respect, trying to get Saturn's friendship. Well, Mercury represents intellect, and Saturn represents scrutiny and fault-finding. My intellect is never bored or unhappy to try to figure out the flaw in anything. It's almost like that's the way that my intellect feels like it can prove itself or feel loved and useful is by, by trying to scrutinize or criticize something. The ninth and final Tarabala is called Atimitra, and that means extreme friendship or adoration. It's a strengthening Tarabala. It forms in a planet that's seven nakshatra ahead of another, which puts it right next to the first trine. A 
planet with this tarabala acts like a muse. A muse is a source of inspiration, delight, and happiness. The Star Strength Report shows that my Jupiter gives Ati Mitrabala to my Rahu. So for me, things symbolized by Jupiter should act like muses for things symbolized by Rahu. So to use one example of what Rahu symbolizes and Jupiter symbolizes, Jupiter symbolizes learning. Rahu symbolizes extroversion. So we should say that learning is a muse for my extroversion. And that is very, very, very true. So basically, like we saw with Ketu's Tarabala to my Mercury, I'm mostly an introverted type when it comes to socializing and conversation. But there is one thing that I could become a YouTuber about. There is one thing that gets me up on a stage or puts me in front of a microphone very happily and makes me a loud mouth. And that's the chance to share learning. So my Jupiter gets very enthusiastic about opportunities for extroversion. That's what this Tarabala is saying. Another way we could interpret this is that Jupiter represents religion and Rahu represents rebellion. So if you know my history, I was a punk rock rebel, but all of my punk rock rebellion was oriented towards morality, ethics, philosophy, and re religion. And I was a straight edge Krishna core punk. So I'm sure this video has you very interested in Tarabala. And I'm sure you're wondering what the Tarabala are in your chart and how you would interpret them. So subscribe to this channel and follow the updates because I'll be explaining that in upcoming videos. But also, go to my website, victicara.com and order the Star Strength report for your chart. The newest report, Star Strength, uses a system called Tarabala to unfold 90 interpretations of the nuanced relationships between all the planets in your chart, which paints a rich and detailed picture of how your various strengths cooperate or compete with each other. Order these or any of my reports and accelerate your journey to deeper self-understanding. Mm -hmm.